What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam. This is Van City Audi. Today I am bringing you a very quick video on how to use the Unilogger from Unitronic. It is their logging tool that they have now provided to all the RS3 and TTRS owners out there that use a Uniconnect Plus cable to tune their own vehicles. As long as you have that cable, you can download this program from getunitronic.com dash backslash whatever it is <laughs> beta so get unitronic.com backslash beta and you can make sure that your cable is registered you can download this software onto your laptop and this is the best data logging software you can get for your rs3 or ttrs if you're tuned by unitronic if you're not tuned by unitronic you've already made your first mistake get on the program switch over to unitronic this software is sick uh there is god i don't even know 40 different parameters, 30 different parameters. There's a lot of stuff going on. And this shows you the entire health of your vehicle in one single pull. Preferably in fourth gear on a dyno, but if you gotta use public roads, third gear so you're not going too fast. Same as all my other logging videos that I've previously explained. You wanna get it over into manual, you wanna be in your sports setting, but over in manual, third gear starting at about 2000 to 2500 rpm floor it wide open throttle carry that gear all the way to red line you can either shift or let it bounce off red line and then shift that's your log that's all you're doing and that is the data that you need so i'm going to do a pull and then go through the actual data that i've recorded ironically i launched the car the other day and i felt like it was breaking up up top not sure why so perfect chance to make a video using the software that I've been using for months now, but I figured I'd show you guys the way I use it, just the general interpretations of what each of the things mean. The most basic things I'll go over today is your ignition timing to make sure all your cylinders are se seeing zero ignition timing, zero, or sorry, zero ignition timing, zero timing retardation. You don't wanna see any timing being pulled or any timing being lost. And then the next thing is your target boost and then actually getting as close to that target as possible. If you're way short, you might have a boost leak. And if you're not hitting your proper ignition timing, you might need better quality fuel. You might need higher octane. So I'm gonna do the pull and then I'll walk you through step-by-step step on how I read this data logging tool from Unitronic called the Unilogger. First things first, let's get it connected. Let's get it started. Uniconnect Plus cable, one end into your laptop, the other end into your OBD2 port. Once that has happened, you need to open up your Uniconnect Plus log history. This window will pop up and will enable you to log your ECU, your TCU, or open up the Uniconnect Plus app if you have an actual Wi-Fi connection. We don't need that right now. We just need to do a log. We're going to click on the ECU log button. First, we want to make sure the car is running, and then we're going to want to click that button. What is happening right now is the actual logger is loading up, and the ECU is connecting to the computer through your Uniconnect Plus cable. This is the software itself, and these are all the pre-selected parameters that it is going to be logging all at once. You don't need to highlight any, you don't need to deselect any. They're all going to be recorded at once. It is amazing. First thing is, hit play. That actually shows you a live graph of what is taking place as you're connected to the car. This is not recording the data though, just so you know. This is just a graph for you to see. Once you're ready to do the recording, that's when you're gonna wanna reach down here and hit this record button. The stop button is located right beside it. So you're starting in motion, you got the car over in manual, you've hit play on the actual unit logger. So it is ready to record. When you're actually at the right speed and the right gear, which I am right about now, you're gonna wanna hit record. Once it's recording, floor it. Get it into seven, slow down. And once you've come to a good speed or even better, a complete stop, you're gonna wanna reach over and you're gonna wanna hit stop on that logger. Now you've come to a stop, you've pulled over safely, you've hit stop, now it's gonna ask you for a description of what just took place. So mine is a TTE 777 E85 built motor. 
So once that's typed in, you can go into open journal and that's going to show all of the ones that you've previously recorded, including the one that you just did. So here we go. This is a full log of the run that I just did. And as you can see, there is a lot of information that is done in one single pull. All of these different parameters were all logged automatically. You don't have to select them. They just do it all at once. All these numbers you see here on the left correspond to where your cursor is over top of the log. I am clicking to the right and those numbers are changing as we go. So wherever this gray line is that runs all the way through these graphs is what's going to be displayed on this left hand side. So the first thing we're going to be going over is the ignition timing. That is the most basic of things you want to look for while you are data logging your car. The first thing we're going to do is deselect all of these items, mainly because there is a lot going on and I just want to make this as easy for you guys to understand as possible. The first thing we're going to highlight is motor speed. You always want to have up your motor speed so you know where in the rev range things are happening. The next thing we are going to highlight is up in this top section, you just want to use this side cursor to go down slightly. You are going to highlight all of the ones that say ignition retardation. So ignition retardation zero, and then array zero, array one, array two, array three, let's cycle down, and array four. I am not sure why the cylinders are labeled this way in tuning, but I have seen it before where cylinder one is referred to as zero, cylinder two is referred to as one, so on and so forth. So what we're looking for over here is we are looking for a flat straight line, which look at that, it is perfect run when it comes to my timing. There was no timing being pulled. If there was, you'd see little dips in the line here. This is straight across. And if you look over here, these tiny, tiny numbers, it says zero over there and it says zero over here. That's exactly what you're looking for. It's not the end of the world if you see these tiny little dips here and over here it says 0 0.75, 0 0.5, but you're looking for zeros across the board. Um, you got to look at that because if you see things like three or two and a half degrees being pulled, that means that maybe your fuel isn't up to par and you aren't making the power that you could be. So that's the most basic thing for ignition timing. You're looking for it to be zeros. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is boost. So I'm going to deselect all of these. I'm going to go down here and look at intake manifold pressure actual and intake manifold pressure target, which is right here. What these two lines are referencing is the boost that your ECU is asking for and the boost that your car is actually making. Just so you are aware, for whatever reason, I do not know why, neither does rider performance, but we've never really hit target boost in my car and my RS3. We've always been a little short and I don't know why. But Showing for the sake of this run, what you see here is this is where the boost is building. And you get to about 38, I think it is. Yeah, 37 and change, 38, where you're up there and your boost is built and you are, should be hitting peak boost. I'm seeing 31.56, but it is calling for... If you look over here, these tiny, tiny numbers over here, where we go, I think it's right there. That's about 3286. So I'm definitely not hitting it. And then if you go up top, when you are balls to the wall and going as fast, you're hitting peak boost right here. I'm hitting 3393. But as you can see the green line, it's actually calling for 3500 or just shy of that. Actually, I think I'm a little too high there, but 34 and change 3482. It says over here on the left hand side. So I am not hitting target boost in this third gear pull. As I mentioned, I see this all the time, but for the sake of what you guys are trying to do, you are trying to make sure that this is as close to the target as possible. If you see it, dipping down and you see these huge dips and this number is much lower than what you're seeing over here as this number here that means you might have a boost leak whether it be minor whether it be major that can play a huge role into you developing as much power as you should be now that I've gone over the extent of what we were able to gather from that log, I hope that helps you guys to be able to log your own RS3 and your own TTRS to make sure you're getting the absolute most performance out of it that you can and to make sure it is running as it should. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, guys, take care.